Hey y'all, Donnie B. Learn Pro Recording. You know, the site that not only shows you how to do recording, but how to get paid for it. Hey man, welcome in everybody. Glad you're here. I got some stuff I want to talk to you about today. I really want to, there's, a, there, there's rumors and things about patch bays that uh, have been misconstrued and people mess up the idea of a patch bay and why you might need one, why you might not need one. I'm going to help with that today. I'm going to talk to you real quick about the configurations of a patch bay and why you might need one in your studio. But before that, I've got something free for you. I want you to go grab my studio growth formula. This is a publication real quick. It's going to help you to build, grow, and scale your studio into something that could possibly take over your day job money-wise and hashtag quit your day job. Come do this for a living. Come do this. Do stuff that you love. Whether it's recording or music or whatever, do whatever you love for your job. And dude, it's not a job. It is a lifestyle. And it's just awesome. I'm so blessed to be able to do this for my living. I have such a great time. I mean, look at my office. This is crazy. This is nuts, right? So, hey, talking about that, the studio that we're in today is esaudio.com. ES Audio Recording Studios in Los Angeles, California. Uh, we do do a lot of work here. There's a lot of clients that come through, a lot of celebrities, a lot of you know, a lot of rock stars, if you want to call them that. But uh, yeah, we have a great time here, man. It's a lot of fun. So without further ado, let's run the intro. Yes, patch bays can be scary. You are correct. But they aren't really. Not if you think about it. I'm, I'm going to run this down to you real quick. Um, the truth about patch bay configurations. Okay, here we go. So look, this is a typical patch bay map. This is where all the inputs and all the outputs of my entire studio are right there on the patch bay. A patch bay is basically the brain of your studio. All the inputs and all the outputs of your entire studio are all on the patch bay. If you're tired of climbing behind your racks and finding the correct cable whenever you want to use a piece of outboard gear or a console insert point or something like that, it might be time to design and install a patch bay for your studio. A patch bay is a central audio connection area for all the gear in a studio that allows any connection to or from equipment to be made in one location with a standardized cable and connector. Patch bays not only save time and headaches, but they also allow you to efficiently perform several mix tricks that would take serious head scratching otherwise. Here's some common patch bay configurations, fully normaled, half normaled, parallel, and open. Those are the four basic common patch bay configurations. Let's break these down. They're not so hard to understand. Fully normal. What this means is that they're all, the th things are always connected. They're always plugged in, always ready to go. You don't have to do anything. It always just works without having to use any patch cables. Like microphone number one comes up on patch bay number one comes straight into the console number one, out of number one on the console, straight into the recording device, in this case it's a DAW, and then back onto the console on channel one so you can hear it. You don't have to patch anything, it's already there. But if you connect into the top jack, it'll break the normal. If you connect into the bottom jack, it will also break the normal. Now the reason you might want to do that is you might want to take the mic signal and send it somewhere else. So there you're going to break into the top jack, which is the output of the microphone. Right? And then you're going to send it to a separate preamp, maybe an outboard preamp, and or a different preamp. And then you're going to send it back into, uh, in this case, Pro Tools 1 or DAW1. Okay, So you're going to break the, the normal connection between the output of the mic and the input of the console, so to speak. Okay, Really simple, actually, if you think about it. So half normal. This also means that it's always connected. You don't have to do anything, and it works without having to use any patch cables, unless you want it to. If you connect in the top jack, it does not break the normal. If you connect in the bottom jack, it does break the normal. So this can come in real handy when you're trying to do, um, a, let's say, a real creative patch. Say you want to send auxiliary one to the headphones, but you also want to use auxiliary one to send to a reverb. So you can have the input to the headphones half normaled at auxiliary one. So you can jack into the top of auxiliary one and it sends it out, but it doesn't break the normal to the headphones. You, so you can also use auxiliary one for the reverb unit or where, say, say you're sending it to a time-based effect, right? So then if you do want to send something else to the headphones, 
you can jack into the bottom and it does break the normal. So you can still use auxiliary one for the reverb, it's just not gonna send to the headphones. This can be handy in a few different ways. You can do some really creative patching if you do it this way. So parallel, look, all parallel means that there's more than one jack going to the same place at the same time. Similar to these lines with it, they all run the same way. It's parallel. It's also called a mult, meaning multiple connections. So let's say we wanna take the signal that's coming out of the master fader on our analog mixing console. We've got a mix on there. It sounds great. We wanna record it back into our DAW. We also wanna record it onto a CD and also onto the half inch mastering tape machine at the same time. We can set up a parallel that's got two or more outputs going from the same place or to the same place at the same time. We can accomplish that by having a multiple or a parallel. Okay, open. All an open jack means is there's no connection between the top and the bottom. It simply means it's not being used, it's open. It's great for having access to input things like, the things that you don't use all the time, say a guitar pedal or uh, other effects or whatever. Things that you might wanna move in and out, things you might wanna move around a little bit now and then. Uh, you know, it, it just keep, makes things really easy. So this is a patch bay. This is a uh, TT Bantam patch bay, and um, it's got 96 connections on it. It's probably D sub on the back and uh, TT on the front. This is a TT patch cable. This is the cable that we use to actually patch, you know, from one jack to another. Okay, so do you need a patch bay in your studio? One way to decide if you need a patch bay is if you look, if you have multiple instruments or outboard gear that you're trying to get the signal in and out for your normal workflow you can design and set up a patch bay that has that on all the time. It's fully normal, half normal, that kind of thing. If you find yourself constantly pulling your interface out to plug things in that, you know, that, that sometimes you don't need it, but sometimes you do, like a keyboard. You gotta pull your interface out every time you wanna plug in your keyboard. Man, you might wanna try a patch bay. You know, if you find yourself wishing you could do something you simply can't because it's a pain in the butt to try to keep moving things around, like pulling the rack out and crawling up underneath your console desk, and you know what? you might need yourself a patch bay. Look around your studio. See if a patch bay might be something you need. You know what, build a map of all your inputs and outputs and see what kind of patches you need. Whether you need half normal, fully normal, open, draw it out on a piece of paper. You know, make sure it's gonna flow. Make sure your signal flow. Remember that word signal flow, man, it's what it's all about. Make sure your signal is flowing from one place to another without having to think about it, or without having to do too much work. Try to think up any scenario that you might have to, you might come up with later in the future. You know, think about things that might come up that you might need. Oh, do, is my client gonna bring me a, uh, you know, a, a laptop that I need to plug into my console with an auxiliary cable? These are things that you might wanna have on your patch bay. If you answered yes to any of these questions, you might need yourself a patch bay. Go get designing. Hey, listen, man, Donnie B, I am out of here. Go build your patch bay. Look, you can always reach out to me too if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Info at learnprorecording.com. I will put a link to this down in the, in the description, whether you're looking at it on the blog or if it ends up on YouTube or whatever, I will put a description down there. If you guys need any, any, any advice or any, any simple question, you know, any question at all, hit me up. I'm right here for you. Info at learnprorecording.com. My name is Donnie B. I am out of here. Peace.